Hi, I'm Jeff Bernhard, President of Commercial Markets at Highmark. Welcome back to Season 2 of Hitting a Higher Mark. Today we're going to be discussing the changes of the political health care landscape following the inauguration here of the new president, Joe Biden, and the most recent change uh, in power within the Senate. Uh, we have a very special guest here today to expand on this model. Uh, and I've been in this business for a long time, and I'd like to welcome Mike Warfel. Mike is the Vice President of Government Affairs at Highmark Health. And like I said, I've been in the business a long time. And Mike is one of the, the best people I know that has, got, has insight, not just on local affairs, but also what's going on from a federal perspective. Mike, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jeff. I um, appreciate the invitation and I look forward to the conversation. Yeah, it's certainly a, a timely discussion, even though uh, since obviously the power in the Senate just changed, uh, even though we'll probably be viewing this, excuse me, uh, displaying this a few weeks from now. So let's start off with a, a pretty simple question, which I think is relatively simple. As the pandemic, you know, certainly hits an all time high, the COVID-19 pandemic, can we expect to see anything any different as it relates to the approach to testing Contact, tra uh, contract, to me, contact tracing, and the vaccinations. You know, Jeff, I um, I, I think this is a great question to start with because uh, President-elect Biden has been very clear uh, since he was elected uh, in November that his number one priority as he approaches his new role as the president come January twentieth is going to be getting our arms around the the, the global pandemic. I would expect that you're gonna see a very robust legislative and regulatory approach. I would anticipate that uh, he's gonna be very interested in making sure that states have appropriate resources to administer uh, the distribution of the vaccines. Jeff, right. in, because of your role, you know how our clients are attempting to get in the queue. Um, and we all know, I think most, most Americans recognize that if we're going to return to some sense of normalcy, um, uh, you know, deployment of the vaccine for all those interested in, in getting it, it's going to be, uh, you know, job one. So the president elect is going to be focused on that. I would expect you'll see additional resources for testing. We still are having some challenges in some parts of the countries, even in the state here, which are for you and I reside. Um, some occasions it's, it's challenging to get a test. And then once you get it, um, you know, getting the results back in a timely fashion, it could take, you know, four or five, six days or longer. Uh, and then lastly, I would expect that um, as the vaccine is being manufactured, it's being deployed to the states, depending on how long that all takes to sync up, Jeff, we may need more financial assistance for small businesses, um, for individuals who have been displaced, have displaced. I mean, we have 12 million people who are out of a job because of the lockdowns, which I understand, you know, and to, to, to hold the spread, to stop the spread, um, I, I certainly get all of that. So finally, I think, uh, as I said, President-elect Biden is gonna be singularly focused with this new Congress about doing whatever it is possible by the federal government to assist the states and ultimately their citizens get their arms around uh, this, this global pandemic. Thank you. Let's talk about the Affordable Care Act as we know it today. How will that be affected moving forward under a new administration? Yeah, so, so Vice President Biden, uh, when he was the vice president with uh, President Obama, obviously was, was intimately involved with the Congress when the Affordable Care Act was enacted uh, during the Obama administration. So I think it's, it's very safe for us to say, Jeff, that the new president, President-elect, uh, Biden is going to be very focused on not only uh, preserving the Affordable Care Act, which has matured over time, and, and, and Highmark is proud to have been uh, part of the Affordable Care Act at its, at its inception, and we still are providing coverage across our markets. But I think that you will see President Biden working with this new Congress to enhance the Affordable Care Act. So what do I mean by that? Well, I think first and foremost, we know that affordability, uh, if you don't qualify for a subsidy, Jeff, it, it's, it's very expensive in some markets to get access to the Affordable Care Act. So I would anticipate 
that President um, Biden is going to come forward with the Congress uh, looking for additional subsidies, maybe even for those folks who don't qualify for a subsidy today who are paying it um, at, at cost. We also need to be mindful that the U.S. Supreme Court uh, heard oral arguments in November uh, of a case in Texas, which has made its way up through the appellate courts, which is challenging the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act and calling into question the zeroing out by the Congress in December of 2017, the zeroing out of that individual mandate. That case was heard by the Supreme Court, and we anticipate that they will render a decision by June of 2021, so within six months. I would anticipate that if for some reason the court, a majority would decide to find that law unconstitutional, uh, President-elect Biden and this new Congress will do everything it can to make sure that that law uh, would be restored. So I would expect the president to embrace the Affordable Care Act and enhance it, uh, promote it uh, for the benefit of all Americans. Thanks, Mike. Um, let's talk about prescription drugs. The current administration has tried to get their arms around uh, the increase in cost of prescription drugs. Uh, what do you think uh, the new administration might do uh, to tackle that, uh, that issue? You know, the, the rising cost of prescription drugs, Jeff, as you know, as we meet with our clients, is one of our biggest challenges. Um, we, all, we all want access uh, to these uh, world-class drugs. And I think, frankly, we, we need to just step back and just pause for a moment and acknowledge the tremendous work that the drug manufacturers working with government funding have done to develop these vaccines in, in record time. Yeah. And so we, as Americans, acknowledge that, you know, part of a drug cost is the R&D. But the question that the Congress and this new president, President-elect Biden, are going to be focused on as former presidents and congresses have is, so what's the appropriate price? to pay for a drug. And so that, that balancing act has been something that the Congress has wrestled with. The Trump administration has been no different in, in promoting efforts to, to limit the cost of drugs. And specifically, um, we saw the president, you may, may recall, he, he, he issued an order, uh, an executive order, where uh, prescription drug manufacturers would have to actually post or list the price of a drug in the direct consumer advertising. That was one regulatory action he, he, he took uh, to hopefully uh, get drug manufacturers to think twice about that drug pricing. Um, manufacturers went to court and the courts found uh, that that was um, uh, inappropriate and uh, uh, they, they simply ordered that that, uh, that, that that regulation had to be um, uh, removed. So I think, the, I think President Trump has tried through rulemaking to get his arms around the price of drugs, but ultimately I think it's the Congress who will have the last say in really managing the cost of drugs. Uh, President-elect Biden has said in his, um, in his healthcare reform plank that he is looking uh, to get the specific right for the federal government to negotiate the price of drugs, particularly for Medicare Part D, Jeff, as you know, it's a huge expenditure for the benefit of seniors. And so I would anticipate that that would be something that he, with the new Democrat-controlled Congress in both the House and now the Senate, is something that they may try to pursue. And we'll see how that all plays out. But, but certainly uh, the rising cost of drugs is going gonna, is gonna to be a focus for this administration, as it has been for previous ones. Yeah, thanks, Mike. As you talked about, you know, this decision will ultimately probably be decided in Congress around prescription drugs. Uh, again, with a uh, Senate and now House, uh, with the Dem uh, Democratic Party having the majority, what other health care issues do you anticipate uh, may be taken up in Congress uh, now that the Democratic Party has the majority? Yeah, so I, I've already uh, mentioned, Jeff, that I would anticipate the, the president-elect is going to look to expand um, opportunities for people to, to access the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he encourages states, those remaining states, I think there are 11 or 12, who still haven't expanded med access to Medicaid. So I would anticipate that. Um, I think, you, as I already mentioned, we're going to see more uh, uh, coronavirus relief, fiscal relief. And, um, and as I mentioned, I think that you will see a formal effort undertaken by the uh, administration, the new incoming administration to address um, the cost of drugs through Medicare negotiations. Thanks. 
And uh, the last topic I want to get your opinion on uh, is uh, balanced bills. I think all of us in our lifetime have been hit with a balanced bill uh, from a hospital or other medical facility. Uh, Congress recently passed legislation uh, to protect consumers uh, around balanced billing. So what impact do you think this will have uh, and when do you anticipate it going into effect? Right. It's a great question. So I think both state legislatures and the Congress for a number of years have, have tried to put in place some kind of guardrails, if you will, on um, the cost uh, of what do you say, surprise billing or, or out of, out of network balance bills, bills yeah. balance bills, et cetera. And so you're right. Um, the legislation that uh, was signed by the president in December is going to eliminate surprise bills, uh, if you will, for, for consumers as of 1-1-2022, so a year from now. Uh, we at Highmark and, and, and providers, uh, payers across the country are gonna have to navigate um, the various internal uh, operationalizations that will be required to, to effectuate this. But I think for consumers, um, if they are in, a, in a, an emergency room and uh, for some reason their payer doesn't have a uh, a contractual rate for that emergency room visit, or if they have an elective surgery and some uh, provider in that continual care is out of network, they get a surprise bill, something they didn't expect. And uh, so this legislation is very pro-consumer in that it takes the consumer out of the middle of this. The resolution to the payment is going to be dependent on the payer and the provider negotiating some kind of, of, uh, of uh, a reimbursement. And if they can't, it will go to a third party arbitrator um, uh, to, to make that decision for them. It's, it's baseball style arbitration. So they'll take into consideration the market rates in the area, et cetera. But long story short, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bill that actually will bring some clarity for consumers, long needed. Mike, thanks for joining us today. And I want to thank all of our viewers for watching us or listening to us about this episode and the changes that are occurring on our political healthcare landscape under a new administration. To listen to an extended video version of this interview, please visit us at youtube.com forward slash Highmark Inc. That's Highmark I-N-C. The link will be also in the description box of the show. So stay tuned for some additional season let me start again. Stay tuned for some upcoming episodes in season two of Hitting a Higher Mark as we explore the value of integrated offerings. We'll give you an update on the COVID-19 pandemic, and we'll learn more exciting news about our newly launched living health model. So I'm Jeff Bernhard, and thank you for listening to Hitting a Higher Mark.